All right, so best 23 for Hawthorne. Mm. Um, starting with the back line, Blake Hardwick, James Sicily, Jarman Impey, Changuth, Giath, Sam Frost, and Josh Weddle. Yeah, this is one of the harder teams to pick. I think, mm. I think it was these guys in Essendon so far, um, just given the kind of evenness and some of the talent they've got, some of the list calls that they have to make, you know, some of the, the young stars that they've invested in with high draft picks might not even be part of the best 23 yet, which is certainly a, still a good factor for them to have. But yeah, the back line is, is an interesting one. So James Sicily is, you know, kind of that locked in at, at fullback. Um, you know, probably won't take the best key forward, but you know, if he ever has to, as he showed this year, he can certainly move into that kind of role and, and be that general in defense. And then it's up to really like Sam Frost or, or James Blank as that next tall. I've gone with Frost, but really splitting hairs, I think, between those two. They love Blank to be playing a bit more footy. Probably just wasn't as favored this year. Um, he's only been in the system for 18 months. So another preseason under his belt might do him quite well. And then you know, they get plenty of good smaller options in Hardwick, who's a great lockdown um, defender, Chank of Jath, probably had a more of a backwards year, but still, you know, in among their best back six for sure. And then jumping in piece the same. I think he played a full season for the Hawks, which is great to see. And um, obviously a nice run, as does Josh Weddle. Uh, got him at halfback, could have him on the wing, but their midfield group is so stacked. So um, he probably just can slot off at halfback um, and had, you know, so much, showed so much in just a, a short time after his debut this year. And then Jack Scrimshaw off the bench, Seamus Mitchell off as a sub. So they've, they've got a few other options on top of, you know, James Blank, uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio, the guys that we don't have in there. So it's, a, it's an interesting back line. And I think it's really one to, a hard one to pick, that back six for the Hawks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in the midfield, so Ned Reeves as a main man, Will Day, Josh Ward, and Jai Newcomb in the middle, and then Connor McDonald and Carl Amon on the wings. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rux, I think they've finally settled on Reeves. Like they've, they you know, tossed and turned a fair bit over whether it's Reeves or Meek. You know, they brought in Clay Tucker and Max Ransom through the last two mid-season drafts, but um, I think they just want to be settled. Mm-hmm. And it seems like Reeves will probably be that man. Um, they've, yeah, first three midfielders, it's probably Newcomb, Day and Ward. Like that's a pretty nice mix to have. And given how young those three are, that just is the reason why there's so much optimism, I think, in this Hawks group. Um, even out wide, Connor McDonald on the wing can play a bit of half forward as well. And then Carl Amon, you know, the most senior midfielder in this group. Um you know, they made that big that money move for him uh, via free agency last year, and I think he had a, a pretty good season. His return to Victoria. Add in, you know, Dylan Moore can roll through the the midfield from from half forward. Connor Nash and James Warple on the bench, mm-hmm. um, two guys that had yeah really strong years this year. Like Connor Nash can kind of you know play a multitude of roles, and, and Warple's form has always been a bit questioned after having such a great start to his Hawthorne career. So that was great to see him kind of back on that trajectory that they want to see him on. You know, you're not having we, we haven't got Cam McKenzie on this side, haven't got Phil Mc, um, Finn McGuinness. You know, two guys that can certainly play. You know, 20 games next year for sure. It's just such a hard midfield group to crack into. Henry Housewaite's another one. I think he only played two games, but mm. was really clean and composed. Um, so they've got yeah plenty of options. As mentioned, Josh Weddle can push up the field. Massimo D'Ambrosio can go on the wing. Chad Wingard, if he gets to play next year as well, um, can roll through the midfield. So they've they've got a fair bit to work with. Um, for that midfield group, it's probably yeah their, their best line yeah um, for sure yeah <clears throat> absolutely in that forward uh, line so Dylan Moore, Marby Chol, Luke Bruce, Jack Inovan, Mitchell Lewis, and Jack Gunston yeah it's it's the area they they've certainly changed the most mm. over the last you know few months and, and through recruitment so you know, brought in Marby Chol, brought in Jack Gunston, lost Jacob Kuzitski and, and Brandon mm. Ryan so you know balance that out as much as you can. Uh, Guns is going to be an interesting one, but yeah, Guns straight certain, in. Yeah, certain starter. I think you know it kind of has to be. Um, Chol's Chol and him are, are going to be quite interesting to see. Surely, hopefully, one of them can support Mitch Lewis mm-hmm. quite nicely. Like I think looking through this season or the last season, um, you know when they didn't have Mitch Lewis or James Sicily, um, they really struggled. And when they had both of them in, they had a winning record. So yeah. if they can keep both of those two at either end of the field, it really bodes well for them. Um, Luke Bruce is really going to be a, a key leader in this group when you've got Jack Inovan in there. You know, Nick Watson probably going to get a look at some point, just misses out um, in this team. So they've they've got some nice tools, but it's really they really just need to find who's that second man is for Mitch Lewis. Yeah. It could be Chole, you know, keep 44 goals last year. Gunston can be hoping to kind of, you know, be back at home and, and a bit more comfortable. Um, you know, Luke Bruce kicked, you know, almost 50 goals this year. Um 
and you know, will be another key piece for them. Dylan Moore, you know, really good for 20 and one most weeks. So um, it's kind of an interesting forward group and Jack Inovan certainly going to you know, add to that. Um, we'll see how he goes. He's you know, had a stellar year last year. Again, yeah. pretty solid this year. Just kind of fell out of form a little bit with, with how well Collingwood's um, list was. Mm. So it's, um, yeah, it's an interesting forward group. And then you know, add in someone like Sam Butler to that mix. Uh, Nick Watson, as we mentioned, is going to be pretty exciting to have him next to Ginevan. And then yeah, Massimo D'Ambrosio has played a little bit forward as well. So um, certainly not short on options. Yeah. yeah. So Ginevan and Watson competing for the same spot or would they be able to play mm. in the same forward it line? It could. It just depends like how tall. Like if you've got Dylan Moore and Luke Bruce you know, locked in there already, it's going to be kind of hard to see four of those guys. Yeah. Um, and Watson could be the sub. Um, it's just, yeah, probably too many smalls. Mm. Um but, you know, they can certainly push Dylan Moore further up the field. Jack Inman yeah. is similar. But I think I just want to see them in the same forward line. Oh, it, it, looks, should, it, it just should happen fun. at some point soon. Just I think Luke Bruce is going to be that cool head that they need in that front third for the, for the yeah. next little bit for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So um, probably not making finals. No, I, no. If any team's making that big leap, it's it's probably them or Frio. Mm-hmm. Um, like they've, they've got a lot of upside, but... Think. It's more a return to form for them as well. Like, yeah, I've just been building, whereas Frio should Frio's have been kind there of going down, year. bouncing back up. Yeah, um, where Hawthorne have just you know kind of getting all the pieces together. Um, but I think they, they they're not expecting it. They're kind of planning a big you know free agency kind of push next year, and then and then when they kind of if they can bring in a big fish or two, um, just kind of with the excitement that's building around their group, then mm-hmm. it's probably 2025 is the year. Yeah, they make the return. Absolutely.